guys, it's Brian Storm, not Brainstorm, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I defend the rush. Other people may have different ways of doing it, but if you're completely lost out there, then let me help you out. The first thing that you want to do when the opponent is skating towards your zone with the puck is try to get in front of them with whoever you can. If you can't accomplish that, then you have to switch to the furthest man back by holding down the pass button or change player button so that the opponent doesn't just waltz right into your zone. Okay, this first defensive tactic that I'm going to show you in the next clip has been circulating around the YouTubes on how to defend the rush, and I don't agree with employing this tactic all the time. The idea is you let your defenders do all the grunt work while you're back-checking. For people that aren't very skilled at the game, this is a great tactic to use against them because they usually have trouble getting past the AI. But if you go into Division 2 and Division 1 and do this, you're just going to get run over because people there usually know how to get past the AI. You'll just hit a brick wall and you'll just struggle to do anything defensively. I think it's okay to do that from time to time, like in this case where he's kind of going over to the side. You know he's most likely going to pass it back, so you just cut off the passing lane and then intercept the pass. If you do want to mix things up, just don't do this that often. So back to what I think is the way that you should defend rushes. I think it all starts in the neutral zone. What I think you should do is stop the opposing player from getting into your zone. And that's what this clip shows you. I'm standing in front of him and blocking his entry into my zone. It gets to the point where it says that there's an offside warning. So even if he forced his way in there, the play could have been stopped. I do think it's important that you guys have the 1-4 one or 1-3-1 one one neutral zone setups just so that you can have more people along the blue line to stop him from entering your zone. Of course, while you're standing in front of him, you want to be going for a poke check to make him lose the puck. At the same time, if you have a really aggressive forecheck, you want to be buying time for your forwards to come back and back check. They usually don't get penalties like this when you're sandwiching players. It's only when... The opposing player turns around and has your AI chase them, which leads to those hooking and slashing penalties. Now if that doesn't work, and the opponent makes it into the offensive zone, the next part of defending the rush begins. Here you're going to be doing something similar. Again, you're standing in front of them, going for poke checks when you can. But the goal here is to force them to the outside. I showed you guys in a previous video where the high percentage shots are. You don't want to let your opponent get into those areas to take a shot. In these two cases, I'm forcing him into the corner by the blue line, but in other cases, you might force him down low behind the net. If you force him along the boards, you can just switch off the player that you're using and then tie him up. In other cases where he might not have any options and you know exactly where he's going to go, you can go for a hit or set up your AIs to go for a hit. But I prefer zone defense, controlling a large part of the ice with one person. I believe I talked about that in the Defending the Cycle video. One more look at this clip. So I forced him to the outside and I know that he's going to make the pass. So what you probably want to do here is switch off from the person that you're using because there's already so much pressure on this guy and switch to this guy in the middle of the ice. Because the smart thing to do here would be to pass it to this guy. And you want to be standing in front of him to intercept the pass without removing any pressure that's on the puck carrier. Unfortunately for him, he ends up making the wrong decision and passing it to the guy that was right beside him, which causes this turnover. But if this guy was a stronger player, then he would probably pass it across. My opponent also shows you guys how to not defend a rush with this clip. It's an odd man rush. I have a person on the far right, and this guy goes for a hit and just completely misses it. What you want to do in a situation like this is, again, stand in front of me and block me from entering the offensive zone. Instead of charging down there, he should have been charging towards kind of like the blue line. Especially in a situation like this, you want to force me to be moving towards my other player so that I don't get to set up any kind of one-timers or mini breakaways. There are two offensive players right next to each other, it's kind of like there's only one of them there. So you'd pretty much turn it into a one-on-one -on -one situation. But if this guy did end up making it to the defensive zone and then had an odd man rush like this where he was in the middle, this is one of the hardest things to defend because you don't know if the opponent's going to pass it or if he's going to go in for a shot or a mini breakaway. 
But your best bet would probably be to wait them out and try to force them as close to each other as you can. If he makes the first move, you should be able to defend it, whether it's a pass or a shot, or if you can see that he's charging in for a breakaway. If he gets close enough, that's when you have to make your move. But it's kind of a toss-up, honestly. Just predicting what your opponent is going to do. Okay, finally, you may face a player, such as myself, that does something like this. I protect the puck with my right stick. I'm holding the puck behind me, so there's no way in hell you're going to be able to poke check me with the guy in front. You could have set up an AI hit on me, but at this point, it's too late because we're already too close to each other. Don't want to go for the poke check because, as you see here, if you go for the poke check, you'll go right for my skate first. What you need to do is stand in front of me, much like how Carlson's doing here. Maybe a little bit closer, but don't overextend too much because I can easily do a between-the-legs deek. You want to focus on stopping me from taking a shot from here. I'm not going to shoot it if the puck's behind me because it doesn't have as much power on it and it'll likely not go in. But if you believe I won't shoot from here, then you can put your stick down on the ice like my opponent did here. It was a great play. It stops me from getting through. The problem is timing is essential on this because if I saw him go down, I wouldn't have made this deke and I would have just gone a little more to the left and taken a shot on the right, giving me a high percentage shot. In other cases, what you want me to do is just force me to the outside like the theme of this video and get me to do something else, such as cycling the puck. There you have it, guys. That is my way of defending the rush. It may not be the best way, but it's what I do and it's what I think when I do it. If you guys have any kind of questions, let me know in the comments.